We thank you, Apostle, for that enlightenment, um, which is purely based on, on scriptures. And we also want to move on to another, another clip uh, from another preacher as well, Evangelist Mparinga. The Gadabu in my members, I'll speak negative against any church. But the Gadabu in my souls, I just preach Christ crucified and resurrection. So the challenge here is for Iro Vangera, you command. Rabon Rokutuya, Ziva Karasika, Asbun Wamari, Munuense is subject to error. Munane Pano Rasika, Munane Pano Kanya. Jesu Ari Mari, the word became flesh, Akava Moon. Pakango Vamun, Kuneja Itika Jemun, Pari, Jumaj no Gonaki, Guno and Evamwe, Mugada suggests Agati and Emotora Dong, Munoti Sheva no Rida, the Charit Zorera. Dongari Tashwa, a pana scripture and a vase in Otaka Zorera Dong. A pana? Why? Because Moon, Ameno Zarara, it was an Arikoko. But the message I got in Jazoka and Dong, and I'm no Zota no Rida, but Richard Zok, but I want a vase not Dongaka Zok. Why? Because Anga Moon. Mwari hako nekutuwa mtu kwa na satani, but Jesu paka nguwa ni flesh hawa moon, the devil came after him. All right, all right, all right. So, we have just heard Evangelist Mparinga preaching to his audience, and he mentioned quite a number of things. Apostle Chiwenga, please may you help to dissect what Mparinga, Evangelist Mparinga, was saying with regards to Jesus Christ, the donkey, and the donkey not there not being a verse in the Bible which was not written, in which the donkey was returned. And then maybe you can just touch upon the other aspects of what he was saying uh, with regards to uh, ministers of the gospel or other ministers. And um, maybe you can just enlighten us a little bit on whether what he was saying is based on sound doctrine or it is something that is coming from himself or from another source. Please may just help us out with that. Well, um, I will start by saying anyone who is going to watch this video, who is going to, who knows Mparinga, who talks, who, who can talk to him, I would like you to know that God is going to punish him for this reckless utterances that he, that he made in this video. Mparinga can make a lot of mistakes. He can misrepresent or he can claim a lot of things. But what a preacher can never do, and this applies to me as well, what a preacher should never do is to try and find fault in our Savior. That is an abomination. That is a heinous sin, which he will be punished by the Lord before he leaves this world. I am not threatening him. I am not cursing him. I am speaking to you what I know the Lord is going to do. This kind of blasphemy will never be tolerated by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. This is something that has bothered me since I watched this video a couple of days ago, and I find it very, very infuriating. Mparinga can say a lot of things negatively about me. I don't really care. But it becomes my business when he decides to assassinate the character of our Lord. It's not acceptable. So I chose. Everything else being set aside, never speak to people about Jesus and find fault in him. That is not acceptable. To call such a man an evangelist is also another demonstration of our disregard to God. I want to warn Mparinga 
his days will be shortened if he does not repent from the statement that he made in this video. I rarely talk about another person like this. I rarely talk about somebody being punished by God. I am not someone who loves to curse people. But let us watch the space. If I am a man of God who will live to see it happen, he has to find the help for what he said. Now, why is Muparinga's speech blasphemous? Why is Muparinga's speech heretic? It makes Jesus unqualified for our salvation. Muparinga says Jesus, the moment he became a man, he was fallible, subject to his own personal error as a human being. Let us hear what the Bible says about Jesus. Was he fallible when he was crucified? I don't know. Maybe people love jokes a lot. Let me tell you, believers, in the Bible, there is a man who joked about God. And God took it personal and he died instantly. So, what does uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 and 19 say? We want to find out whether there was a sin found in Jesus because he had become a man, like what Mparinga has just said. These are very, very disturbing words from a running mouth. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, yes, as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, yes, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamp without blemish and without spot. Mm -hmm. Elder Jeremiah, the scripture tells us that Jesus was a lamp without blemish yes. and without spot. Yes. Muparinga says that's not true. The moment Jesus became a man, he was subject to temptations. Mm. And one of the weaknesses or the sins that Jesus committed was that he borrowed a donkey and promised to return it, and he never returned it. We are going to look into his example but not now. We want to see the scriptures first, whether it is true that Jesus was fallible. The moment Jesus was found with a blemish, he would not have qualified to die on the cross. The death of Jesus was premised on his purity, his blamelessness, his unblameworthiness. That is the foundation of our redemption. The world had no shortage of fallible men. If God wanted someone to die for us who had a weakness of his own, he could not have sent Jesus. Maybe he could have sent Mparinga's ancestors. Yes. Hebrews chapter 2, verse number 18. For in that he himself had suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. All right. Hebrews chapter 4. So the Bible says Jesus suffered being tempted. But the question is, when he was tempted, did he succumb to the temptation? Chapter 4, verse 14. Seeing then that we have in Great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Jesus. Seeing that we have a great high priest who is passed into the heavens, yes. Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. Yes. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. We do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. 
Basel, but was in all points tempted like as we are. Jesus was in all points tempted like us. Yet without sin. Yet without sin. So Jesus had been tempted, was tempted countless times. Yes. But the Bible says he was yet without sin. Did Jesus commit any sin? Mparinga, yes, said yes. Mparinga says, yes, Jesus committed a sin. He did not return the donkey he had actually borrowed. By the way, Jesus never borrowed any donkey. Jesus took a donkey. Yes. That is different. So those who laugh like the journalists or the DJs who were in this video, laughing at Mparinga, mocking Jesus. I also want to warn them, why don't you do something else other than talking about Jesus? Clearly Mparinga is looking for money. He's selling protod bread in the radio station. Yeah. What is that to do with Jesus? How does preaching get connected to marketing products like bread? Look, I'm warning you, if you are a journalist, I'm warning you, I'm warning you. Do not be where people mock God. Don't participate when people begin to mock Jesus Christ. Unorowa, unetukwa chimbo, yakarowa gwenzine tsuro jese. It may be a joke to you, but it is not to God. Yes. Because he invested his dignity when Jesus was hanging precariously on the cross to redeem his people. Now you are looking for bank bills, dollars and coins. You, de you design a plan that I'm going to be using Jesus on the microphone, on the camera, to get mileage, to get followers, to get, to get a prominence, you are entering into a dangerous territory. Jesus was a man, but what makes Jesus special, so special to us that we are willing to sing all day and all night around, praising him? He is the object of our adoration. All this preaching we do, we preach him because he was a precious lamb without blemish. That's what makes Jesus special to us. He was a man in whom there was not found a blemish. Yes. When you find a blemish on Jesus, you are ruffling the feathers of the Godhead. And you will never go unpunished, mark my words. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 20 to 22. For what glory is it if when you are buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently? But if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even here unto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us. Christ suffered for us. Leaving us an example. Christ left us an example. That you should follow his steps. That we should follow his steps. Who did no sin. Christ did no sin. Neither was guile found in his mouth. Neither was evil found in his mouth. How many scriptures have I read so far Sorry. to show you that Christ was found with no guile in his mouth. Where is the evidence that Jesus made mistakes as a human being? Where is that evidence? The evidence is in Mparinga's mouth and not in the scriptures. Let us read now Matthew 21, where the donkey incident happened. Let us find out whether Jesus borrowed a donkey and refused to return it. And when they drew and, nigh... And he said, Ameno zarangara akuitis kwa ikoko. Mm -hmm. Adikani. 
Regai kudamari kushika pashika mparinga hapa. I'm warning you. How can you talk about Jesus and say, Hameno dongi, sharangara akwiti sikuwa ikoko. Are you talking about the Lord or you are talking about your father? Yeah. Even baba wako cha yeah, yoda jirimaya. Hautaure nezwa baba wako chidara. Yeah. There is no respect whatsoever in imparing us his speech. This is heartbreaking. And this is highly sensational. Yes. Let us watch how the love of money and where it will take him. Let us watch this space. Matthew 21 from verse number one. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus to his two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village of against you, and straightway you shall find an estide and a coat with ye. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, you shall say. If any man asks you, where are you taking these donkeys? You shall say. Say unto them. The Lord is in need of them. Ishe ano adama dongai. And straight away you send them. Straight away he will not bother you again. Yes. Tell me, those who love Mparinga, tell me. Mparinga, tell me. Where did you obtain a scripture? In the Bible, in which Jesus promised to retain those two donkeys. Brethren Chico, can we watch it again? Some people will say, Mparinga never said Jesus promised to retain that donkey. I heard it. We just played that part until he said, Amen. Munuense is subject to error. Munane pano rasika, munane pano kanya. Jesu ari mwari, the word became flesh, akava munu. Paka nguva munu, kune jaiti gaje munu, pari. Jumwe jino gona kui gino wane wamwe. Mkatarisa Jesu, akati yende munu tora dongi. Munu tishe wano rida, dichari zorera. Dongi la aritashwa, apana scripture kana verse ino tipaka zorera dongi. Apana. Why? Because munu, ameno jarara kitu kwa naro yiko koko. But message yagari nitisha zoka ne dongi. And I'm not going to read that, but Richard Zok, but I'm going to face not Don Gregor Zok. Why? Because I'm going to. I want to warn those who can identify the voice that laughed after Mparinga said this. Please write down the name of this person. Write it down. And you will see what God is going to do with this situation. I am here to tell you that God is angry at Mparinga because of what he did. And he caused a sinner to blaspheme by mocking the Holy Son of God. Jesus is described as thy holy child. That means the infallible, never defiled with the sin child. That's what it means. Well, others may say, where is it written? It's there in Acts chapter number 4 from verse number 24. Jesus is described as the holy son of God. The word and, holy, it means never committed a sin. Yes. Yes. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which hast made heaven and earth and the sea, and all that in them is. Who by the mouth of thy servant David had said, Why did the heathen rage, and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. Yes. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus. They were praying to God. Yes. The apostles said, Of a truth against thy infallible, never weak, never committed sin, child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together. And so, 
even at the time our Lord was crucified. He was crucified without any sin. He had committed no mistake. And that Jesus could not have committed any mistake is the center of our faith. Amen. What makes Jesus special is that he could not commit a sin. The moment a mistake is found in Jesus, he becomes like any one of us. Yes. This is the very matter that a certain dandied, a certain charlatan, a man who has just come to town a few years ago from the farms, he has found people who are desperate for jokes. He decides to joke with the integrity of our Savior. It's not just insensing to us. It's provocative. We can't ignore this. I'm very amazed by these charlatans. There is so much mufunge. You can joke with a lot of things. Why do you find the name of Jesus to be the object of ridicule in a bid to commit to joking? You want to crack a joke? You then despise our Lord. Brethren, is this acceptable? I want to tell you, believers, if I come to Jesus, Revelation Ministries, and I speak like this, if you do not rebuke me, we are going to be consumed together by God. It's not acceptable. Yes. It's not acceptable. You want to give an example that everyone can make a mistake. And your example of a man who can make a mistake is Jesus. The just one. <laughs> the just one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Elder. <laughs> you cited another description of Jesus, which focuses on his infallible nature. Stephen described him as the just one. Peter described him as the just one in verse 14 of Acts chapter 3. Let's hear him. But you denied the Holy One. You denied the Holy One. And the just. And the just. And desired the murderer to be granted unto you. According to Peter, our Lord is the Holy One. Yes. The just one. Yes. But Mparinka says, no, Jesus is not the just one. Yeah, yeah. Jesus is the weak one. He, he was a man like us. He is subject to error. Now, how can our land be blessed when we have such men masquerading as preachers? Instead of praying for Zimbabwe, we'd rather pray for the pastors of Zimbabwe. Yeah. Because the preacher is supposed to be a shepherd who leads the nation to God. But where is Muparinga leading the listeners of these radio stations? Where he goes to preach? It means everyone who listened to this on this particular day, he went home with an understanding that even Jesus made mistakes. Mm -hmm. It's common to make mistakes. Yeah. How can a nation be blessed when it is people who are so reckless, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities? It's very, very sad. It's very, very sad. Now, Mparinga was saying, pastors must preach about the cross and not about the mistakes of other men of God. Is this the cross that he was preaching himself? <laughs> Do you cross your jury? <laughs> no. Brethren, Chico, is this the cross? Would you want to associate with such a man of God? Definitely not. Who boldly tells you on the radio that even Jesus could make mistakes? Which mistakes did Jesus make, Mr. Amparinga? Well, he abused a donkey which he had borrowed. He could have retained it, but as a reckless man, he could not retain. Does Muparinga know the meaning of the word the Lord? 
Let me give you this, as I conclude this reaction, I'm very angry at what, what Mparinga has said. The scripture says, the Lord asked the apostles, if anyone asks you, where are you taking these donkeys? Tell them that the Lord needs them. Yes. In the Jewish context, if you hear that there is something that you have, but somebody called the Lord wants it, it becomes a gift to the palace. Yes. People do not borrow their kings anything. Kings don't borrow from their subjects. And this is why the Lord said, as soon as you say the Lord, yes. straight away he will allow you to take them. Yes. In Israel, in the medieval kingdoms, if you have something that the king wants, you would find yourself highly privileged that you are able to give something of value to the king. Yes. And this is why when the apostles spoke to this man, we are taking these donkeys, the Lord needs them. The, 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 the man could not even ask, which Lord are you talking about? Yes. The man said, take the donkeys, go and read Second Samuel, and see what Arauna said. When David said to Arauna, I want to use your oxen to burn in a sacrifice to God. Arauna gave the oxen and the garden free of charge to David. They had a long battle in which David was convincing Arauna, this is a sacrifice to God. I have to pay you. Arauna was unwilling to receive anything from David. Because kings don't borrow from their subjects. Amen. So that Jesus borrowed a donkey is a rhetoric from a stupid man. Yes whose mouth must be stopped yes. before he brings a case upon the whole nation. Yes. If we continue to tolerate people like Mparinga like this, there will be nothing left to build upon in our nation, I'm telling you. The last thing we need is a pastor who brings a case upon the nation by provoking the throne of God with his such reckless utterances. And am I in verse 4, you can now see that all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. So to him, it's a joke. But what he doesn't know is this was a fulfillment of the prophecies that has been said. And it's a shame that we do have someone who say, I'm a preacher of the gospel. Mm. Yes, um... I'm realizing that uh, for a long time, there are a lot of things that um, we've been calling doctrine and certain understandings that we, be, that we were washing, worshiping God, um, thinking that we're doing the right way. But when we say we're worshiping God, we have to make sure that we are sure of what we believe in so that we don't touch live wires like these ones and anger the Lord. So Apostle, thank you so much for that enlightenment. I'm sure if there's anyone out there um, or probably there's anyone, anyone out there who have uh, probably committed something like that and would like to know if maybe there is a, um, an opportunity for them to seek help from men of God so that um, they can be uh, saved from the wrath of God. The problem with such situations that we have with Mparinga statement right now is he can't help himself. He will actually need to find a man of God to go and seek help from. I blasphemed. I just didn't know that I was blaspheming. But I repent in dust and ashes. May God help me. The, if he can find a true man of God, who will then have to pray to God to receive an instruction on how on, and whether God wants to forgive you. We, as we speak right now, if Mparinga does not repent, he will be punished. There's a case coming upon him. 
as we sit here, including the person who laughed when he said this. Mark my words. If anyone can tell whose voice it is, I said, write it down. Let us watch the space. We don't worship an idol. We worship a God who does not sleep or slumber. It's totally unacceptable. Even Pontius Pilate, who was the presiding judge when our Lord was tried in the court of law, he looked at Jesus and found no fault. Imagine a Roman a, 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 a member of the ruling class. He looked at Jesus and said, there is nothing that this man has done that is worthy of death. He found no fault in Jesus. But we have a man who purports to be an evangelist who finds fault in Jesus. And all people can do is to giggle and laugh. What is there to laugh about? Why can't he find the fault in President Mnangagwa? Has a time put our energy fault here, President? Barukure Avan, Nukzakatisavan, Munika, Nikese Chuona. You can't find fault in a murderer called Mnangagwa. You find fault in Jesus. Let us see what God will do to him. But this is totally unacceptable. The unfortunate thing is, these kind of utterances bring a case upon the nation. The moment you receive such a man to your congregation and listen to him as he preaches, the case that is upon him will come upon your life. And this is why there is such a scripture in, 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 in uh, 2 John chapter 1, verse 7. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver in an antichrist. Look to yourself that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ is not God. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ he had bought the Father and the Son. Ten. If they come in unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. Why? For he that biddeth him Godspeed is a partaker of his evil deeds. So those who are inviting Mparinga at their churches, they are becoming partakers of Mparinga's evil deeds. You can't invite such a charlatan to preach in your church. Yes, yeah, you can't. Mumbacha mucha imova never not to zvot, babaka never pinda, tino peta muskwe, tino fa na kushit zora kana tiripa duze na baba. How can you preach about Jesus, whom you blaspheme at the same time? How can you be a servant of God, whom you mock at the same time? So Jesus stole a donkey, according to Mparinga. Mm. Is that what you believe? Is that what you believe now? That Jesus was fallible. He took a donkey and never returned it. Imagine, kuziva ma mistakes, kushikawa kuziva mistake, ya kakuponesa. Mparinga has become so much of an expert in personal mistakes in different people that is now able to tell even the mistakes of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is an abomination. All right. Thank All you right. so much.